is a fun one. NASA, you guys know where NASA headquarters here. Um, they're heading to um, another asteroid. You guys, I reported on the returning the sample, which I guess they're going to open tomorrow or something. Um, the sample from Bennu, the asteroid, where they went and they landed on it. It was like a big clustery, dusty ball of rocky bits. <laughs> and uh, if we ever chop down the Rocky Mountains, we got to call it the Rocky Bits. Did you ever think about that? I just did. So they're doing another one to the real prize. The real sweet, sweet, the meat, the ball, the meat, the ball of the uh, solar system, the metal asteroids. There are probably two million asteroids in our solar system. The reason that Psyche is unique is that it is metal rich. It's believed that it may be a remnant core of an early planetesimal. One of the ingredients that went into making our Earth and one that we cannot see any other way. And it would be the first metal object that humankind has ever visited. Studying the evolution of a planetary body is a detective story. I think the only thing we know is that it's not gonna look like what we think it's gonna look like. And it's gonna be really interesting, whatever we find. Space is always more amazing than we can imagine with our minds. Yes. Carve some houses into it, move some people up there, give them some, some cling clang tools, get that metal baby. The belters. We have to fight off the Martians. And the earthlings. I mean, that's, that's, that's an expanse reference guys. That's expanse. You know that guy who's the actor in, in Chernobyl. He's in that. The belters have this accent that this is how they, they talk cause they live in space. They're the exploited workers, you know, they're dependent on the uh, largesse that comes from the Martian, which are humans. They're just colonizers who colonize Mars. Um, not going to happen by the way, 30, 36 or 39% Earth's earth's gravity. Ain't no fucking way. We ain't doing it. We're going to send some, some corpses onto Mars. We're going to just, we're going to burn up some really smart people's brains on Mars. That's what's going to happen in our lifetimes. That's my prediction. <laughs> Mars is such a fucking hostile place. Let me just tell you something. But, uh, the metal stuff, this is all very, and this is another thing that if I ever get my wherewithal, my wits about me, I want to become like the guy who knows about capitalism in space because there's like treaties and stuff and they're already starting. We're going to have wars over the moon maybe. Um, but metal asteroids are, well, I was actually quite glad to see this as a NASA produced video, but um, that they didn't say there are $17 trillion of platinum in that asteroid. Cause that's what we're looking for. We're looking for uh, wealth. That's a resource to mine. Very, very cool. in like a sci-fi video game kind of way. Like, you know, you fly out there, zap the mine, zap, zap the asteroid with a little laser, and then, like, it breaks apart, and a little thing floats, and it says, you have gained 14 neutrons of deuterium. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's stuff is useful. Metal is a cool substance. Metal is really useful. I got some metal around here, right? actually. I think there's some metal. Look, I got metal right here. Look at this. It slices through stuff. Those were scissors. Did it get on the mic? This is a, that's a, that's a safety video right there. Uh, how did he how did he die? Podcasting? Well, what? Well, he's, he he got stabbed in the heart with scissors. Those would have been some sharp ass scissors. It would have just maybe nicked one of my nipples. I could I could lose a few anyway. Um, so it's awesome shit, man. Metals are cool stuff. There's a good market. Maybe we can maybe we can tank the platinum market. Maybe they'll stop stealing all those catalytic converters and stuff. Could send up some uh, impoverished people to uh, to to mine it. No, I, I don't know. But okay, so either either you go, you get the metal, and you bring it back. That's very expensive, obviously. Or you go and you put real rockets on the asteroid, and you fly the booty home. Instead of opening the loot chest, you just put rockets on the loot chest, and then you bring it home, and then the rubies and the gems and the emeralds and the coins that have Dracula's face on them, spill out. That's how that would work. But we're going to let Elon Musk do that, probably. I'm just kind of just playing with this idea. Okay, we're not, I don't have any fucking news behind this. And they're going to take the asteroid. Now, orbital dynamics and orbital physics are way more fucking complicated than video games and movies have trained us. You don't, you don't just fly over and park. It's not like driving to grandma's house. It's not like a long trip to Ottawa, Okay. It's not like a long drive from London to Westminster, all right? Or I meant to say the other one, West Winchester. What's the Manchester? 
It's not one of those. You got to go real careful, but we're good at that. Actually, it takes a lot of science. A lot of smart people do that shit. Uh, but you could you could fuck that up. You could bring a giant asteroid loaded up with metals. An Iraqi one would also be very bad too. But it's probably in terms of density, a metal one is heavier. I would imagine that's just my my sort of armchair armchair uh, amateur amateur cosmologist. I should start calling myself an amateur cosmologist. I thought of a new term for myself, a term coiner. I just made that up. See? I have achieved my dream of coining terms. I'm a term coiner. World's first known term coiner. Right here. Pioneer. Pioneer. Pa coiner. Pioneer coiner. See? I made one up. I termed a coin. I minted it. All right? I am such... I do I do want to term coins. I mean, ter come make terms... What if I had a stroke right there? Um, okay, so <laughs> they could fuck up an asteroid, though. They could bring it here so that we could mine it. And uh, 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 looks like we didn't aim really well or something goes wrong. So they have to be very careful. We're actually pretty good with that shit. In fact, you know, the we all know that the asteroids killed the dinosaurs, right? One cool thing. God, this is just terrible podcasting. Uh, one cool thing that you might not have uh, understood about that other than just the immensity of that. It, it, it vaporized, it hit the Yucatan Peninsula in uh, Mexico, kind of like it, it both land and uh, ocean. So it was actually a very, very like bad spot. Hitting the land is was worse than if it just had nailed the ocean. It still would have caused a global catastrophe if it had hit the ocean, but we might, it might not have caused a full extinction depending on where it hits on the earth. Cause the earth just is, it's dynamic. It's not all the same in every single spot. So it hit a pretty, pretty good spot for a big boom. I mean, it would have been a gigantic thing no matter what. But where it landed, vaporized everything. I think it's up to, I don't know the words, but or the numbers, but it's like six hundred thousand or not six, but like a thousand or twelve hundred. It was like all the way into North America. Everything was just cooked almost immediately. But that's not enough to like roast the entire planet. It doesn't just go around there. What happens is. It ejects all this material up into space, and it doesn't just go flying off because Earth's gravity immediately is pulling everything down. So it, it everything goes up into an orbit. It kind of it's kind of the way like a milky layer forms around a ball, if you can imagine that. And all this material going up into into, into, into like very near Earth orbit, as it spread itself around, it rained back into the Earth, which means you had. I don't know the tonnage or something, but you had all this stuff, ejecta, they call it, uh, becoming meteorites into the Earth. So if you're on Australia or on the other side of the planet, after the hit, it took some time, like a few hours, I think. But eventually the sky would have started glowing and all that heat from the now superheated rocks and, and little bits and shit that are falling back into the earth all that heat then would have just lit everything on fire below it so the, the the atmosphere became a cauldron from the material going up circling and then coming back in from the from the gravity crazy that just blows my mind it's just like and it's just the entire sky the entire atmosphere basically just turned into a the inside of a toaster for a second and the dinosaurs went ah, ah, and then that was it birds were still flying around alligators were tucked away into their mud you know they survived plants got all fucked up lots of trees got killed trees do pretty well they you know forests and, and like you know stuff bounces back pretty well green stuff likes to grow pretty quickly from after fires <laughs> not that that's like a good reason to just burn shit down after this yeah and the big ones all gone all the all the cool dinosaurs man all fucked them all up sucks Really sucks, doesn't it? So uh, what the hell are they saying? Um, oh, the other thing is they would maybe uh, park an asteroid above Earth in a geosynchronous station in order to use the asteroid using some kind of automatic thing to build the tether, which is like the space elevator concept, although that, that also has a lot of problems. So good on you, NASA. Let's go learn more about these metal asteroids. I'm sure this is uh, much to the, uh, you know, capitalist class of the world. Um, you know, that's what's so dangerous about technology. It's not so much that the technologies themselves are what's dangerous and certainly they're powerful, but what's dangerous about technologies like AI, like the machinery that they were imposing on the, uh, 
the loomers and the um, fabric weavers of the Luddite era is that the people in charge of the technology were of ill intent. We knew that they were de uh, devoted to money and to power and to achieve that they use technology to impose suffering and deprivation on the rest of us that's what is scary about ai it's that it's in the hands of people who are proven to be psychopathic and dangerous capitalists